I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt God's name together. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. There's a theme in these scriptures. Let me see if I can give it to you again. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt God's name together. Is there anybody that's just glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time? Is there anybody here who can say, I, somebody didn't make it, but I'm here and I can exalt God's name together. Is there anybody here that can say, this is the day that the Lord has made. And if I'm here today, I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. We have so much to be grateful for. So much to give thanks for. So much to thank God for. And I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that I'm in the number. So glad that God allowed me to see another day. I don't want to waste another second. I don't want to waste another minute. I don't want to waste another day. This is the moment that I have to give God some praise. And I'm going to praise God. Because God's been that good to me. He's been that merciful to me. He's been so gracious to me. And I don't know why. It's not because I've been so good. And it isn't because I've been so perfect. But, but God's grace and God's mercy looked beyond my faults and saw my need. And, and God's mercy said, I'm not going to give her what she deserves. I'm going to give her what she needs. Anybody can say, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. God didn't have to do it, but he did. And because he did, I'm going to praise him. I'm going to praise him. Amen. Y'all sit down because we still got a whole lot of sermon to get to. I, I just felt like we needed a praise break. Sometimes we can get so caught up in, in the logistics and we can get so caught up in the formalities of church that we forget. We forget that we are here to worship. And so I just wanted to take a quick little praise break. I want to do a quick little check-in to make sure that, that, that y'all are still breathing because the Bible says, let everything that hath breath. <laughs> praise the Lord. I'm looking out into the congregation and I see some folks, man, with some testimonies. And I just want to shout you out. Susan, it is good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, Herb, it's good to see you. It is good to see you. Gretchen, it's good to see you, even though you've been pressing your way out here. Yeah, Chris and Noel, always good to see you. I see, I see an old friend, Elaine. It is good to see you. It is good to see you. I'm going to get in trouble. I done started calling names out. It's good to see everybody. I, I just know their stories. <laughs> I, I know what they've been through. And 
I just wanted to let them know that it's good to see them. I'm glad that they are here. Mr. Johnson, I'm glad you are here. Amen. Amen. I, I do believe that there is a word from the Lord. Um, so so let's let's get to it. Let's let's get to it. Um, you know, when I'm humming and hawing like this, you know, it's a it's a reluctant word. <laughs> It's a reluctant word, but we're going to see what God's going to say to all of us today. Come on and stand to your feet. Ash, can you turn me up a little bit? Don't worry. If, if I get too loud, I'll, I know what to do. In the book of Acts, the 27th chapter, I'm not going to read the in entire chapter. Uh, I'm going to read selected passages, but you all are going to get the gist of, of, the, of the passage. I'm going to pick up at verse 18. There's a whole lot of scripture before this, so when you get home, read Acts 27 in its entirety, but we're going to pick up at verse 18. Reading from the New Living, Trans the New Living Version, it says, the next day, a gale force winds continued to batter the ship. The crew began throwing the cargo overboard. The following day, they even took some of the ship's gear and threw it overboard. The terrible storm raged for many days, blotting out the sun and the stars until at last all hope was gone. No one had eaten for a long time. Finally, Paul called the crew together and said, Men, you should have listened to me in the first place and not left Crete. You would have avoided all this damage and loss. But take courage. Somebody say, but take courage. None of you will lose your lives, even when the ship goes down for last night an angel of God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me and said don't be afraid Paul for you will surely stand trial before Caesar what's more God in his goodness has granted safety for everyone sailing with you so take courage, for I believe God, for I believe God. I know what the other folks are saying, but I believe God. I know what it looks like, but I believe God. It will be just as he said, but we will be shipwrecked on an island. All oh, you hear the bad news, cupped up in the good news. Yeah. All right, let me get through the scripture. Verse 33, just as day was dawning, Paul urged everyone to eat. You have been so worried that you haven't touched food for two weeks, he said. Please eat something now for your own good, for not a hair on your heads will perish. Then he took some bread, gave thanks to God before them all, and broke off a piece and ate it. Then everyone was encouraged and began to eat. All 276 of us who were on board. After eating, the crew lightened the ship further by throwing the cargo of wheat overboard. When morning dawned, they didn't recognize the coastline, but they saw a bay with a piece uh, with a beach and wondered if they could get to shore by running the ship aground. So they cut off the anchors and left them in the sea. Then they lowered the rudders, raised the foresail, and headed toward shore. But they hit a shoal and ran the ship aground too soon. The bow of the ship stuck fast while the stern was repeatedly smashed by the force of the waves and began to break apart. The soldiers wanted to kill the prisoners to make sure they didn't swim ashore and escape. 
but the commanding officer wanted to spare Paul, so he didn't let them carry out their plan. Then he ordered all who could swim to jump overboard first and make for land. The others held on to planks or debris from the broken ship. So everyone escaped safely to shore. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you remain standing as we pray? God, we thank you. For this day, we thank you. For this worship experience, we thank you. For this moment, we thank you. For this word, we thank you. God, some of us have been waiting all week to hear a word from you. So God, we have gathered, gathered in the sanctuary. We've gathered in the virtual sanctuary. We are waiting. We are ready to hear what does God have to say about what I'm going through. God, I'm asking that you speak today. Speak to me. Speak to us. We need a word from you. And God, listen, if it's not on my iPad, just place it on my lips, oh God. I just want to speak what you want me to speak. I just want to say what you need me to say. I just want to preach what you need me to preach. And even if it's not here already, just drop it in my spirit. And I promise, oh God, I will say what you have me to say. Touch this waiting congregation. Meet them where they are. Speak a word that will address their specific situation. Have your way in this preaching moment. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 You may, you may be seated. The next day, as gale force winds continued to batter the ship, the crew began throwing the cargo overboard. The terrible storm raged for many days until at last all hope was gone. But Paul said, take courage. None of you will lose your lives, even though the ship will go down. This morning, I, I want to preach from the, the topic, learning to accept what God won't fix. Learning to accept what God won't fix. Well, family, as of last Thursday, we officially have a two-year-old in the Crompton household. Can y'all believe it's been two years? I feel like it was just yesterday that I had revealed, right, during the pandemic that, that Noah um, um, was, was going to be born. But, but it's been two years, and we officially have a two-year-old. Now, if you have ever lived with a toddler, then you already know that every day is an adventure. Now that he can walk, now that he's mobile, Noah is in to everything. As a matter of fact, that's what we call him at home, Mr. Into Everything, because he's into everything. He's into the cabinets, he's into the drawers, he's learned how to open the freezer, the oven. He can now reach the knobs on the stove. He's also figured out how to open the garbage. And you know what else he discovered? That he can put things in the garbage. And so we found a whole lot of stuff in the garbage, Deborah. He's put remotes in the, in the garbage. He's put AJ's shoes in the garbage, pens, pencils, spoons. Somehow Nyla's homework made it into the garbage. I'm still trying to figure out, was that Noah or, you know, you know, you know, because now that, now that he's mobile and now he's doing a lot of stuff, he gets blamed for a lot of stuff. Because he can do a lot, but he can't talk yet. Who ate these cookies? That was Noah. Noah. Okay. But you're the ones with the crumbs on your mouth. But, but it was Noah. Okay. Okay. Right? 
Right? He, he's thrown things in. Even Spider-Man had to be rescued from the garbage the other day. Mr. Into Everything is in to everything. And for the most part, we're handling it. Right? We're not new to this. We, we've been here twice before. And so we went out, we bought all of the locks that we needed to put on the cabinets. And, and we've done everything. We have the, the little door thing so that he can't just open the door and run out. We, we, we've done all the things that, we've, that we needed to do. We're not new to this. We're true to this. We've been here before. It's not a problem. It's not an issue until... Somebody say, until. Until Noah gets into AJ's stuff. He'll go into our room and he'll mess up my vanity and throw my makeup all over the place. He'll throw Andre's shoes all over the place. He'll even get into the preteen's room and the preteen will say, Mom, come and get Noah. He's in my stuff. All of that stuff we can handle, but AJ... Now, you all may be thinking, well, why is that a problem? Okay, let me, tell you, let me help you out. Just in case you haven't interacted with my son as much as, some, as, as others, right? My son, AJ, is protective and particular about his stuff. AJ can have 20 trains. If one is missing, he'll know. And he'll be able to tell you exactly what color the train that's missing. He can tell you everything about that train. Every morning before he leaves, he sets his toys up in a certain order so that when he comes home, it's already in place for him to play. And let me tell you, in between him leaving and him coming home, if you touch anything, if you move anything, if you breathe on anything, he will know. And so we try as much as we can to keep Noah out of AJ's things because if not, it will be World War II. Free in our house. Well, we try, but, but, but the reality is AJ has the most interesting toys in the house. So, of course, Noah just naturally gravitates to his stuff. Well, on Monday, Noah just gravitated to his stuff. And I, I watched the whole thing go down. And you know what, Tony? I didn't even try to stop it because he was quiet. And he wasn't throwing anything in the garbage. So I said, I'm going to let it go. What's the worst that can happen? Famous last thoughts. About 10 minutes later, I can hear AJ screaming, no one, no. And then AJ comes running into the kitchen with two parts of a toy in his hands. And he says, Mom, Noah broke my toy. He says, Mom, come on here. You have to fix it. I could see the panic in his face as he's shoved these broken pieces into my hand. And I said, okay, 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 let me see, let me see, let me see. Y'all, I was praying so hard. I was praying that this was something I could just snap back into place. Please let this be a Lego that I can just put back together again. But y'all, no such luck, no such luck. Uh, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't something I could just snap back into place. Noah broke this toy, and there was no amount of crazy glue or scotch tape that could ever put this toy back together again. Man, I started to panic. I started to breathe because when, when things are out of order for AJ, he, has the, he starts to melt down. So I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm about preparing myself for a meltdown. So what I did was I sat AJ down and I explained to him that the toy was broken and that mommy could not fix it. And you know what he said to me? He said, yes, you can. Yes, you can. You have to try. <laughs> try, mom. You can do it. Then he becomes my cheerleader. You can do it, mom. Come on, try. You, you can do it. And he was so convinced that, that I could put this toy back together again. And, and I had to explain to him, no, baby. No, 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 I, I can't. I, there are just some things that can't be there are some things that we just can't put back together. And I even took the two pieces and I tried to show him there's no way that these pieces could ever go back together again. 
And family, here I am trying to make this make sense for my son. And, and I watched him through his frustration, through his anger, through the tears streaming down his face. Try to comprehend, try to come to terms with the fact that his toy was broken. And he sat there and he demanded, he insisted, he begged me to try to fix it. And in that moment... I realized something. We're the same way. Now, it's been a while since most of us have cried over a broken toy. I hope. <laughs> but things break down in our lives all the time. Relationships break down, jobs break down, positions, careers break down, marriages break down, our homes, our families break down, even our bodies break down. And when things break in our lives, like AJ, we become frustrated and angry as we try to comprehend, as we try to come to terms with the fact that there is something broken in our lives and with tears streaming down our faces we bring our broken pieces to God and we demand we insist we beg God to fix it why because we know that God has fixed things before as a matter of fact we've seen God fix things for our neighbor and we've seen him fix things for our friends and he's even fixed some stuff for us and, and so when God wants don't fix what we have broken in our lives we get frustrated we tell God try again no 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 you can do it God try again no 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 God I've seen you do this before you can put this back together again I need you to fix it it's broken I need you to put this thing back together again we beg God we insist we demand that God fix the broken things in our lives but here's the truth of the matter. There are just some things that God won't fix. And listen, I didn't say that God can't fix it. I said God won't fix it. And there's a difference. God is able to do all things, but there are some things that God won't do. There are just some things that God won't fix. There are some marriages that God won't fix. Some relationships that God won't fix. Some people that God won't fix. Let me pause parenthetically. Have you ever asked God to fix somebody? God, we could really make this work if you would just fix him. Fix his mind, fix his heart. Fix, if you fix him, it will be all right. God, I could stay in this job if you just fix her. <laughs> fix her attitude. <laughs> fix her spirit. If you just fix her, everything will be all right. But there are things that God won't fix. There are some jobs that God won't fix. Some opportunities that God won't fix. Uh, there are some things that God will not put back together for us. Some broken hearts. Some broken promises. Some broken dreams that God won't mend. There are some closed doors that God won't open. Some ways that God won't make. And the question I want us to wrestle with this morning is how do we accept what God won't fix? I believe that the Apostle Paul in our scripture passage can help us a little bit this morning. What we know about this text is that Paul is at the end of his ministry and that he has spent the last two years in a prison in Caesarea, being held on trumped up charges. He was charged by the Jewish Sanhedrin. Somebody say his people, his people. He was charged by the Jewish Sanhedrin of being a troublemaker who defiled the temple, taught against the law of Moses and was a traitor against Caesar. So although he was innocent 
Paul failed to receive justice from a broken criminal justice system. More specifically, Roman governors Felix and Festus, who quite frankly just didn't like Paul. And because they didn't like Paul, they decided to trump up these charges and keep him in prison. Paul knew that he would never get a fair trial in Caesarea. So he appealed to Caesar, which meant he had to go all the way to Rome to stand trial. So Paul is a prisoner on this ship, on his way to Rome to stand trial for crimes he didn't commit. When the text tells us that the ship encounters a terrible storm. Now Luke, the author of Acts, is with Paul on this journey. They're together. He lets us know from the very beginning from the very beginning that the weather conditions were not conducive for sailing. Early in the chapter, this is why you gotta go back and read it. Early in the chapter, we see they had several days of rough sailing. They struggled to stay on course. They've been struggling the whole time. And in verse 10, when they are preparing to leave Fair Havens and sail to Phoenix, Paul warns against it. Paul's just a prisoner on this ship, but he rises as the voice of reason. He told the sailors, he says, listen, there is trouble ahead if we go on. There will be shipwreck, loss of cargo, and danger to our lives. But the authorities would not listen. Listen, there are some storms that we encounter in our lives, not because God put you there, not because God directed you there, but there are some storms that we encounter in this life simply because we didn't listen. Simply because we ignored the signs. There were some big flashing signs from the very beginning. There was some difficulty in the very beginning. There was some clues that this was going to be a rocky road trip from the very beginning. But we, we ignored the signs. We overlooked the signals. And guess what? Now we find ourselves in a storm. God told you in the very beginning he wasn't the one. And what did you say? I think I'm going to find out for myself. God told you in the very beginning that her driveway didn't go all the way to the street. There were some signs in the very beginning and would you say, I can fix her. God told you, don't get comfortable in this job. This is temporary. And would you say, I'm going to make it work. There are some storms in life that we encounter. Some of us are shipwrecked right now on the side of the road trying to figure out why. You're blaming God. You're telling God to fix it. And God said, you weren't supposed to be on the ship in the first place. That's why it's shipwrecked. You weren't supposed to be on the ship in the first place. Before you begin this next journey of your, in your life, make sure you are paying attention to the signs. Yeah. Stop making excuses. Stop, stop ignoring things that are so blaringly obvious. Because if you don't, you're going to find yourself in some terrible storms. God is going to get us to where God needs us to be by any means necessary. Even if that means shipwrecking the wrong ship so that you can get back on the right course. <laughs> Paul told them from the very beginning 
we shouldn't leave. We should stay here. But who's Paul? He's just a prisoner on this ship. But in verse 20, Luke writes, as they, as they ignored Paul and, and they started to head to Phoenix, Luke writes, the terrible storm raged for many days, blotting out the sun and the stars until at last all hope was gone. This storm was so bad, y'all, that everyone had lost hope. Everyone had given up. Everyone started to believe that they were not going to survive this storm. And just as everyone was starting to make peace with the fact that they were going to die in this storm, Paul once again has a word. He stands up and he says, listen, y'all, listen, all 275 of you, I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. Which one do you want to hear first? They said the good news. So Paul said, okay, the good news is we going to be all right. We going to be all right. That's the good news. We're caught in the storm. The wind is raging. The waves have driven us off course. I know you're afraid. I know you're frustrated, but I spoke with God and God told me that we're going to make it. That's the good news. Are you ready for the bad news? And they said, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's the bad news? And, and, and Paul said, the bad news is we're going to lose this ship. Wait, wait, wait. Hold up. What? What, what do you mean we're going to lose the ship? We need this ship. How are we going to make that? That sounds like a paradox. How are we going to make it without the ship? The ship is what's carrying us. The ship is what's holding us. The ship is what's keeping us safe. The ship is providing shelter from the storm. We need this ship to get to our destination. How are we going to survive without the ship? Paul says, listen. We are going to have to learn how to live without this ship because this ship is going down. This ship is falling apart. This ship isn't going to make it. But if we're going to survive this storm, we're going to have to learn how to live with what God won't fix. Family, I came to you in the spirit of the Apostle Paul to tell you I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. The good news is this storm that you are facing, this storm that you're in right now, it's not going to take you out. This storm is not going to end. I know what it looks like. The winds are raging. The waves have taken you off course. I, I know. But guess what? You are not going to die in this storm. This is not the end for you. You are going to make it. Ain't that good news this morning? That's the good news. But I also have some bad news. The bad news is you're going to lose the ship. The ship that you're on is not going to make it. You're going to make it, but the ship that you're on, oh, it's not going to make it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You are not going to fall apart, but the ship that you're on, yeah, that's going to fall apart. And there's nothing that you can do about it. The ship is going to break apart, and you are not going to be able to fix it. I know. I know that's devastating news for those of us who have put everything on this ship. Our hopes are on this ship. Our dreams are on this ship. 
We've invested time in this ship. We went to counseling so that we could save the ship. We, we put a whole lot of money on this ship. This ship was with us from the very beginning. The ship was supposed to be with us to the very end. How are we going to live? How are we going to survive? How are we going to make it without this ship? We've got a lot riding on this ship. This ship is my safety. This ship has been my security. This ship has kept me safe from the storm. There's no way that I'm going to make it. No way that I'm going to survive without this ship. What do you mean? I can't take this ship. If this is you, if you, like me, are having a hard time coming to terms with the fact that the ship is not going to make it, if you are like me and you cannot see life without this ship, God has a message for us today. Are you ready? Get closer to the computer. Put the phone up to your ear. Lean in if you're in the sanctuary because God has a word for those of us who can't see life without this ship. And here's what God wants you to know. It was never the ship. It was never the ship. It was never the relationship. It was never the marriage. It was never the job. It was never the money. It was never the position. It was never the job. It was never your family. It was never him. It was never her. It was never your degree. It was never your pedigree. God says it was never the ship. It was me. God said it wasn't the ship, it was me. I am the one keeping you. I am the one holding you. I am the one carrying you. I am the one sustaining you. I am your shelter in the time of storm. I am your bridge over troubled waters. I am your doctor in the sick room. I am your lawyer in the courtroom. I am your burden bearer. I am your heavy load sharer. God says it was never the ship. It was me. It was me covering you. Me providing for you. Me protecting you. God says the problem is you put your trust in the ship when you should have put your trust in me. That's why you're so devastated because you put everything in this ship. Time that you should have spent with me, you put it on the ship. Money you should have gave to me, you put in the ship. You spent too much time, energy, effort on the ship and it wasn't the ship, it was me. I was keeping you, I was holding you, I was sustaining you. You should have been putting your trust in me. You put your trust in this ship. And now you're devastated. God says the ship isn't going to make it. But it's okay. You've got me. You've got me. That's good news. It's good news to know that when the ship is going down in my life, God is still with me. Sometimes when the ships go down in our lives, we start to think, God, where are you? How'd you leave me? Why'd you abandon me? And God says, no, 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 no. The ship is going down, but I still got you. I'm still with you. I'm still holding you. I'm still keeping you in the midst of the storm. That's why you're not going down with the ship. God 
God is with me. I may not have the ship, but I've got God. And God is all I need. It's good news. But guess what? I got more good news. That's good news, but, but it's not the only good news. I, I've got more good news. Somebody say, she's got more good news. <clears throat> In the text, after the ship crashed and broke apart, the text tells us that everyone who could swim began making their way to shore. Imagine the scene. The, the ship has crashed. It's fallen apart. There are pieces everywhere. And those who could swim jumped in and made it safely to shore. But here's the thing, Mo. There were people on board who couldn't swim. This is, a good, this is good news for the people who could swim. Hey, but what about the people who couldn't swim? We look at the text again. And here's what we learn, that the only way the people who couldn't swim could survive, the only way they could make it safely to the shore, the only thing that was going to guarantee their survival was holding on to the broken pieces of the ship. The only way they could make it was to hold on to the broken pieces in the ship. They lost the ship, Karen, but they were able to make it on the broken pieces. Family, the storm is raging. The ship that you're on is not going to make it. And listen, you're going to lose some things. But here's the good news. You're not going to lose everything. The ship is going down. You're going to lose some things. But you're not going to lose everything. And what I've come to tell you is that you may lose the ship, but you still got a piece. You may lose the ship, but you still got a piece. And if you have a piece, you can still make it. That's good news. That's good. You don't have to have the whole ship to survive. If you could just hold on to a piece of the ship, you can make it. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I, I can't imagine, right, that they're out here in the water. The storm is raging. and They're already afraid. And, and then they watch the only thing that they had, the, the one thing that could get them to say, break apart right in front of them. And now here I am preaching this message like, oh, but you had a piece. Y'all are probably looking at me like I'm crazy too. What do you mean, pastor? Why should I shout over a piece? Because the truth is, five minutes ago, five days ago, Five months ago, five years ago, I had a whole ship. And you want me to get happy? Because now I got a piece? What are you talking about? I get it. Trust me, I do. I get it. But here's what I've come to realize in my 40 years of living. I know I ain't been here as long as LJ. But, but in my 40 years of living, I've learned some things. Or I should say Karen, because it's her birthday. Right? I've learned some things, and, and here is, is what I've, I've come to realize. Sometimes when we lose a ship, we gain a peace. Y'all don't, don't know, y'all don't know when to shout. Let me pull over and give it to you again. Sometimes when we lose a ship, we gain a peace. Now I'm talking about peace. P-I-E-C-E. -E. But I'm also talking about peace. P-E-A-C-E. 
CE. Yeah. See, 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 when you have a whole ship, you got to deal with a whole lot of ship. You see, there's work that comes with a whole ship. Maintenance that comes with a whole ship. There's stress that comes with a whole ship. You gotta do a whole lot of cleaning when you got a whole ship. There's frustration, there's worry that comes when you have to deal with a whole ship. So maybe, sometimes, every now and then, when we lose the ship, we gain some peace. I, 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 wonder, I wonder if there's anybody here, if there's anybody watching who can testify, I lost the ship and all I have left is this peace, but I still got my peace. I lost the corner office and now all I have is this piece of a cubicle, but I can make it because I have my peace. I lost the house and all I have is this piece of apartment, but I can make it because I still have my peace. I lost the Mercedes and all I have left is this piece of a hoopty, but I can make it because I still have my peace. I lost the marriage, but I still have my peace. I lost the job, but I still have my peace. I lost the six figure salary, but I still have my peace. I thought the whole ship was what I wanted, but then I learned I can make it with a peace. And I'm so glad because I still have my mind. I still have my peace. I still have my sanity. I still have my love. I don't have the ship, but I've got so much more. Is there anybody here who can testify? I lost the ship, but what I gained is irreplaceable. I lost the ship, but what I have is so much more. Is there anybody here who can say, I don't have the ship, but I've got my mind. I've got my joy. I've got my peace. And that's all I need. I thought I wanted the ship, but what I have is so much more. And if I have to do it again, I'll give up the ship over and over again because what God has given me is so much more. The lessons I've learned, the things I've gained, the new relationships I have. Sometimes when you have a ship, it takes up too much space in your life. Doesn't leave a whole lot of room for anything else. You'll discover that once you get rid of the ship, how much more space you have, how much more time you have, how much more capacity for love and joy and happiness you have. Sometimes God will shipwreck us just to get that ship out the way to make room for everything that God has for us. Family, the truth is this. Sometimes life will send a storm so catastrophic that it will threaten our ships. Not all ships are going to survive the storm. Do you hear me? Not all ships are created equal.
Not all ships were designed to make the trip. There are different kinds of ships. And it will behoove you to figure out what kind of ship you are on right now. So you got cargo ships. These ships were designed for the long trips. They're built to last. Some of us are trying to figure out why we're shipwrecked. We're trying to make it to our destiny on a cruise ship. The cruise ship is created for entertainment, not for the long haul. Cruise ships are fun. And I'm sure that when you started out on the journey, y'all were having a good time. But now God says, I need more from you. There are other things I want to do in your life and with you and through you. So God had to shipwreck that to get you on course. Figure out what kind of ship you are on right now. Not all ships are designed to survive a storm. There will come a time when the ship we are on will break down, will fall apart, will be torn into pace, into pieces. And just like AJ, we're going to gather the pieces of our ships because we're going to be so devastated and we're going to be in denial and we're going to bring them to God and we're going to shove all of these pieces into God's hand and we're going to demand that God fix our broken ships. But there are some ships that can't be fixed. So we have to learn how to accept what God won't fix. And here is what God says. God says, you're going to lose the ship, but you won't lose your life. You're going to make it. God says, you're going to lose the ship, but you still have me. God says, you're going to lose the ship. But you still have your peace. And family, let me tell you, you can make it on broken pieces. We we, we can make it on broken pieces. As a matter of fact, some of us have gotten so used to the high life and and, and the upscale life that we forget that we started off on broken pieces. We grew up on broken pieces. Then we went and got edumacated. We bought a, we bought a, 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 a house, right? And, and got a fancy car and a fancy, fancy uh, a job. And we got a whole lot of letters behind our name. And, and, and then we get shipwrecked and we, try, we act like we don't have any survival skills. Yes, you do. You've been here before. You've been here before. Eating mayonnaise sandwiches, that ain't new to you. You've been here before. Beans and hot dogs, you ain't too good for beans and hot dogs. That's what mama used to fix. Oh, you got to move into a one bedroom. You've been there. At least it's you by yourself. When you were growing up, it was you and your whole family. You had to share a bed with with Nene, who used to pee pee in the bed. You can make it on broken pieces. If this ain't your story, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It is, right? I know. I know. I know. I know. It's my story, too. We we ain't always have everything that we have right now. So if we have to go back there, we'll survive. We'll survive. We, we, We can make it. We can make it. As long as we have our peace, we can make it. Amen, family. That's the word today. That's the word today. 